Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is Real Talk with Coach Sherry. And this channel is about workforce development, career readiness, entrepreneurship, and of course, real life, real issues, and real talk. Thank you all who have been rocking with me, who have gotten me to my 500 milestone. Thank you so much for being part of this team. If you have been watching me along the way and on the fence about, hmm, do I subscribe, do I not subscribe? I invite you today to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications so that you can be alerted when I upload new videos. Thank you. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with those who you feel need to also hear this message. Also, please be sure to comment. I love comments so much. I appreciate that. Comments is like your way of communicating with me and I definitely respond to all of my comments. So I appreciate it. So you guys, as part of my channel, you know who I am as a professional, but also one of the purposes for me doing my YouTube channel is to leave a legacy, to leave my footprint, to have a platform where I can tell my story and future generations to come who I may not have the opportunity to meet can look back and see what I was doing or what I was talking about in 2020. This is our legacy, whether you know it or not, if you are a YouTuber, big or small, what you put out there is who you are and how you will be viewed even when you are long gone. So this is my legacy. As part of my legacy, I want to share a journey that I took um, 10 years ago. It ended um, and I, <laughs> it was a journey with my mother as she lived with ALS. I was her primary caregiver and was with her every single step of the way. And that whole experience was so dynamic. It was definitely it was definitely my assignment and I took that assignment very seriously. Um, that journey was unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life. It changed who I am forever. It changed how I moved as a wife, as a mother, as a businesswoman, as a sister, as a daughter, as a cousin, as a niece, as a friend. It changed how I moved in all of those areas in my life. My entire family, my husband and my three children, we stopped our world. We stopped our world as we had known it to do this assignment. My family stood beside me hand in hand and walked through this assignment with me. It wasn't even assigned to them, but because they were part of me, it became assigned to them. And I loved them so much for taking that assignment seriously. I loved them so much for never allowing that assignment to come between us. I love them so much for not holding that assignment against me or my mother or anyone, for loving us through it, for helping us through it, for supporting us through it, for being there every step of the way. I love them so much. My husband was a warrior. They always say, you never know who a person is until there is a trying time. And for my husband, his, his stance was, we got to do what we have to do. We have to do what is right. And he was there with me every moment, never questioning, never doubting, just there in full a thousand percent support. And I love him that much more for that. When I reflect, it, it's always, he's always somewhere in the picture upon that reflection. And I appreciate him and I've told him and I tell him, and I know that he knows how much I appreciate him. Our lives back then, oh my goodness, it was, it was so much, you know, um, I, here I am fast forward 10 years later without my mother. I never thought that I could breathe without my mom. I know many of you will say, I don't know what I would do without my mother, but if you trust in God, if you know God has your back, has you, uplifts you, you will survive. You will continue. You will continue to put one foot in front of the other and be even better. And this is 10 years later. 
You guys, that experience was so huge. I knew that I had to capture each moment. Not only did I have to start doing my business differently, I had to start doing it virtually back in 2009, 2010. I was probably on the on the cutting edge of things because I was hosting virtual coaching sessions with women all around the country. And um, because I couldn't see them in person, I couldn't leave my mother for long periods of time. It's not even really short periods of time. But um, I started to blog. I um, did a WordPress blog, it's called ALS Caregiver, and writing out experiences that we were having, things that I was, I was noticing, things that my mother was sharing with me, how she was feeling. And my blog has helped so many people around the world who are living with ALS, who are the sons and daughters of parents who were diagnosed with ALS. Not every ALS patient lives with it in the same way, but they all live with it in a very similar way. And so me sharing my day-to-day -day has been very helpful. Um, the last six days of my mother's life were so vivid. They were so loud, I had to blog about it. And so I have a series and it's called The Last Six Days of Living with ALS. And I always said, if God was willing and I was alive 10 years later, that I was going to share that journey in some form or fashion, either putting it in a book or through video, because I want people to be exposed to that experience. And maybe, and hopefully, and prayerfully, it will bless someone. It will help someone. It will, it will let you know that Crossing over is a beautiful thing, but you want to be highly aware. You want to be highly conscious during the whole process because it is a, it's, it's, it's a life-changing moment for more reasons than one. And if you can glean nuggets from that situation, that is those life, last life lessons that your loved one is giving you. That is the last life lessons that your loved one is leaving for you to continue that legacy, to let everyone know it is all right, it is okay, you will be all right, you will be okay, you will, you will survive. And so I'm here today to start off um, just to give you a little snapshot of one of the blogs that I wrote regarding um, my mom as she lived with ALS. And so this blog is, is titled, ALS Hit Us Like the Titanic Hits the Iceberg. And now I also wanna give you <laughs> this one piece of information. When I write, I don't read it over. Writing for me is therapeutic in that it gets out those thoughts, it gets out those emotions, and I put it down on paper, or in this case, on a blog, on the computer. Um, and it might have grammatical errors. <laughs> Some things may not be written out the way it should, but I just kind of throw it all up out and onto that document. I don't go back and I don't edit. I don't you know, change things around because I'm just really pouring out my, my authentic feelings. Um, that's how I do a lot of things. <laughs> I, I pour them out and get them out and, and leave them where they're at and come what may. So as I'm reading this, literally 10 years later, um, 11 years later in some instances, but um, for the last six days, it's definitely 10 years later, um, I'm reading it over for the first time. So bear with me. ALS hits, hit us like the Titanic hit the iceberg. So for many, they look at ALS as that is something that they are dealing with over there. That stance is taken often when you are not educated one way or another about a particular illness. Prior to October 2008, I didn't know much about ALS. I definitely didn't know anyone who had it. But October 2008, my mother was diagnosed with ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. 
The day we found out, we actually celebrated. And looking back on that day, two years ago, we were like passengers who boarded that fateful voyage on the Titanic so many decades ago. Prior to her diagnosis in the late 1980s, my mother started experiencing problems with swallowing certain textures of foods. She had one of the most beautiful and well-trained singing voices that I have ever heard around. And around that same town, time, she found it difficult for her first soprano voice to hit certain high notes. Then, in most recent years, her voice became extremely weak while talking. She was treated for thyroids. That was the only cause her doctor could come up with as to why her voice was changing so and why it was becoming more difficult for her to swallow. Prior to her diagnosis, about seven years before that, she began falling. Not the trip and fall we all may experience from time to time if we're not careful on certain terrain, but I'm talking just learning how to walk one you roll type of falling where she couldn't even put her arms out to catch herself. The kind of falling that a toddler would do. July and August of 2008, my children and I were with her and witnessed falls just like that while at the farm getting vegetables and enjoying a great day at the lake. Prior to her diagnosis, she experienced changes in the range and comfort in her body, shoulders, hands, knees, etc. She ended up getting a right shoulder and knee replacement, but that didn't help her increasing weakness or symptoms. September 2008, she went for a follow-up after her knee replacement to her orthopedic doctor. He noticed that her voice had changed even more and scheduled her for MRI. She had the MRI done and they noticed atrophy on her brain and recommended that she go to a newer neurosurgeon. Neurosurgeon, <laughs> sorry. We went to the neurosurgeon and after reviewing her visually, <clears throat> he recommended that she go to a neurologist. We met with the neurologist that day and visually he made a diagnosis of ALS, but didn't want to rely on that and scheduled her to come and have intensive testing done. We went back the next week for the intensive testing. I was in the room with her as they hooked up all kinds of patches and cords to all parts of her body from head to toe. They were measuring the waves of her nerves and her diagnosis was positive for ALS. Because we finally had a name for what had been occurring in her body for years, we celebrated. Not knowing was like walking into a dark room and getting punched in the face every time you went to fight, to flick on the lights. Knowing gave you the chance to flick on the lights and see the punch coming. As we smiled, cried and laughed during the diagnosis, I remember the doctor looking at us ever so curiously. He was like the designer of the Titanic when they went on the tour and they were raving about the boat having this capability and that capability. And all the while, the designer warned Rose, the actress, about the lack of lifeboats. The look in that doctor's eyes when he looked at me said, there are not enough lifeboats for everyone. That is when our real journey began. So ALS does to a person what an iceberg did to the Titanic. It's not necessarily searching for you, but as long as you are in the open waters of life, you may get snagged by it. ALS is not particular to any one type of person. There are many different forms of ALS. It is a very custom blend disease. Go into our ALS Association chapter meetings. I see people from all walks of life and ages. There is no known cause. There is no cure. However, unlike the Titanic, 
there is no opportunity to steer away if you are headed right towards it. This is why the ALS registry, which is now functional, is important for people with ALS and PALS, which is the caregivers, to register. By registering, better statistics on the disease can be monitored, patterns will be exposed, and we will be that much closer to finding a cause and or cure. So let's not go down with the ship because of the iceberg. Together, we can make a difference and steer into safer waters and continue our celebration of life. I wrote that. And shortly after my mother's diagnosis in 2008, and we're still no closer to a cure. And although ALS does not have a face, it doesn't, you know, it, it, there's no cause anyone can get it. Um, it is really high in military and professional athletes, NFL players in particular. And my husband is a 10 year NFL veteran. <clears throat> so that's something else that is on top of the mind. Just about a couple of weeks ago, um, a player who played in the league at the same time as my husband um, passed away from ALS. Remember the ALS ice challenge? I don't I, I I was hopeful that people would be more curious as to what what is ALS what what is this all about but they were more curious into the challenge. I thought it was a challenge with a purpose but it still didn't bring us any closer. It raised a lot of money and the association is so grateful for that because I'm trying to tell you that money goes directly to the families. It is so needed to take, now this is 10 years ago, to take care of an ALS patient, especially in the home, is about $200,000. And that's with insurance. That's after the insurance. So this is my journey that I'm going to share with you and I hope that you're able to learn more about ALS, learn more about life and death. Um, I'm just going to go over the last six days of living with ALS, but I invite you to read more on my blog. Um, there's so much incredible things that my mother and I did together and that my family did as well while she was living with ALS and um, she is a crusader. She, she wanted to do better so that others behind her could have better. She sacrificed going to, you know, receiving better care because she felt that if we made enough noise, it would, it would change what was going on where she was. And it did. It did. We made some changes. <laughs> but um, stay tuned. Tomorrow, I'm going to um, work my way back. My mother passed away August 30th, 2010. So I'm working my way back and it starts tomorrow. All right, everyone. I appreciate you for tuning in, for watching this video. And be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, please, I invite you and subscribe. And thank you so much for those who have been rocking with me. Until we speak again, remember, practice how you play. Practice hard so you always play to win. This has been Real Talk with Coach Sherry.